Hello everyone and uh, welcome back to another lecture on how to use the cool features in Unreal Engine 4 to make awesome prototypes for your games. I will start off by saying thank you to everyone who liked the last video. I was honestly rather surprised that it got so much attention and so many positive comments. I love it. Thank you very much. So let's get on with this. Uh, today we're going to look at how to replicate the uh, ability from Overwatch called Blink that the character Tracer uses. If you don't know what that's about, then just go look it up. It should be fairly easy to find. But basically the ability uh, puts you forward. It, like, it pushes you in the direction you're currently running. So backwards, forwards, left and right. We're only going to look at the forwards one today. We could probably implement left, right and backwards in a future video. Uh, but today we're going to keep it simple. Uh, so I think that the way Blizzard does it when Tracer jumps forward is that they physically move her forward so that like she's not like, well, she's teleported forward more, more like it. She's not moved. She's teleported. That's what I think at least. Uh, so basically what they do is a lot of magic happens behind the scenes, of course, checking for if she tries to blink over traps, uh, through people and stuff like that. But honestly, I think they teleport her. I don't think they move her. But we're going to move our character. We're not going to teleport it. Just to try and, and keep it authentic when you look at the Tracer lore for how they describe that ability. And uh, we're going to do all of it inside the first person character blueprint. This is the first person uh, example template that you can start out with. You can do this in third person as well. Uh, it actually works pretty well in third person. I tested it out. But for all you know, intents and purposes, we're going to do it in first person today. And this is, of course, in the blueprint example. You can also do this with the C++ example because all of the things we're going to do is going to happen inside the first person character blueprint. Uh, you could implement this in C++ as well, I'm sure. Uh, I haven't tried yet, but I'm sure that's perfectly possible too. Maybe cleaner. All right, let's get to it. So first of all, we're gonna go to, up into the project settings, go into our action mappings, and then add a button so that we can use the ability at all. We're gonna call it Blink, and we're gonna just follow what you know Blizzard does in their game and use the left shift button for that. We could also add an alternative button that they also use, which is right, oh, right, oh, come on, right, right mouse, oh, there we go. Right mouse button, yeah, they also use that. So let's just, you know, for fun's sake, put those two in. Okay. And then we dive into our first person character blueprint. So how are we going to do this? First of all, we're going to add an, a variable that's called is using blink. And the reason for that is we don't want the player to continuously spam our ability while they're in the middle of using it, because that's going to cause a lot of issues. Um, so it's easy just to do this. Uh, so let's call in our blink input action here, yeah, and ask, first we get this, and we say branch, and we ask, is this in use, is, you know, are we using blink right now? If not, which is what we want, then we set this to yes, we are in fact using blink, so that this can't be re-triggered until this is set back to false, and then we're going to do what is called a raycast, and a raycast is basically just the game throwing out a line in the world and see what it hits. It's how most hit scan weapons work, basically. Uh, you fire, you press the trigger button on your on your uh, keyboard or controller, and it sends out a line in world space, and then it sees if it hits anything, um, and then applies damage and all the other things. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna say line trace by channel. Yep, line trace by channel. Stick that in there. And it asks us for a start and an end uh, and eight actors to ignore. Uh, so we're going to say the start one is fairly easy. We're going to pull all our information here from the capsule component that this uh, character has right here and say world location. Yeah, that's where our trace is going to start from. So that's basically in the center of the capsule component that we have on our player. All right, but how far out should it reach? Well, to do that, we have, we'll, we'll have to do a little bit of vector math. Uh, so we ask first for the forward vector of the capsule component, so we know which way the player is currently facing. 
then we are going to extend that vector by multiplying it with a number, an integer, and we're just going to use 750. This is going to be the max distance that you're going to blink. You can change this if you want. You can make it bigger. You can make it smaller. It doesn't really matter. Um, I think 750 is a fairly close number to what they do in Overwatch. So that's what I'm going to do. And then we are going to add these two together like so. And there we go. Now we have our end vector. So what did this give us? Well, first of all, let's just take this and put it over here and say, there we go. Okay, so now we can test it. Did we do it right? Oh, it's not drawing. Let me change that real quick. For duration, it's gonna be drawn for five seconds. Okay, cool. Let's try that again. Right, so when we press left shift, we see this red line that comes here. That's the line trace. Uh, you can see it extrudes from the capsule component center and 750 units out. That's like, what, seven and a half? meters or something. I think the actual blinkability is 7.8. So actually, let's just do that. Let's just say 7.8. There we go. Okay. Okay, so this is what we are going to use to make this ability work. So what now? Well, first of all, we are going to ask, first we're going to remove this, then we're going to ask, did we hit anything? Because this is important. Uh, and then we're also going to take this result, just in case. Uh, so it's important to ask that we hit anything because if we didn't hit anything then we just move the player like we don't ask any questions we just move the player because then there is no danger of like accidentally landing inside a wall or something like that so we just move the player we, we didn't hit anything we move the player okay cool so let's get our component here and uh, then we're going to call move component two we're gonna say move it and it's going to be this component we move we move the capsule component because it's the root of all the other components so everything will just automatically follow uh, and then we say where did the trace end that's where we want to end up and then it asks for a target relative rotation and we're just going to use the capsules rotation here the relative rotation there we go Oh, wait, no, that's setting it. We want to get relative rotation. Here we go. There. Right, so because we don't really care to change the player's rotation, we just want it to stay the same. And it asks us uh, how long should it take, and I'm going to say 0 0.15 seconds. Should be fairly good. Let's test this out real quick. So we take our uh, variable from before, and we set it to false. Okay, let's try it out. And look at that. The line shows us that it's line tracing out and we end at the end of the line trace. All right, cool. We already have something that works. Now here's the problem with how this currently works. See, if I hit this block here, you see that it hits it, the little square thing, and it stops. I don't move anywhere. And that's because we haven't actually considered, well, what do we do if we hit something? So let's, you know, go and handle that. First of all, we will look for when, like, whether we hit something that implements physics or not. So let's just branch that and say the actor we hit get root component from that actor we just hit. Let's just move this out of the way a little bit. Like this, yes. Okay. And then we ask, is this component simulating physics because if it's simulating physics then we can hit it without a problem because it's going to move out of the way so we're going to do that we say yes yes it is moving you know it is simulating so we move we don't care at this point we just move all right cool but what if it doesn't implement physics well if it doesn't implement physics then we have to do something a little bit different because that means that we can end inside of the wall if we just do what we're doing here right now so what do we do? We ask, where is the impact point? Let's put it up here somewhere. Yep. Where's the impact point? Where did we hit whatever we hit? And then we say we want to move to. We just copy this one. Say false. Put that up in move here. And then we move. We say, well, we want to make sure we land a little bit away from the wall or object that we hit. 
So let's say we subtract a vector from a vector and we're just going to subtract, I don't know, let's just say 10, 10 units. We don't care about the z-axis uh, at all because this whole system works us off of the x and y plane. The reason for that is you can teleport up in the air with this ability, at least not originally. You could change this. You could change this capsule component here to the camera manager, the player camera manager, and then basically do the same. Like you could pull this in there. Uh, you could pull this in there and do the whole, sh whole, whole shabam and then just move the capsule component still. And then you would, you know, take the Z axis with you, uh, but we're not going to do that. So we don't, we're not going to care about the z-axis. Then we say whatever comes out of this calculation, we put in there. Cool. Then we take these two. That's because we still need the rotation. All right. Oh, come on. And lastly, we, of course, need to set, tell it to move the actual capsule component. And then we set this back to false because now we are done with that ability. Let's move this up and line it up a little bit nicely. There we go. Okay, so let's see if this works out. It should, but let's see. Oh, I hit something with physics and it lets me do it like that. You see that? This one too. Oh, it went flying. Okay, well, let's try and run into a wall. And it stops me before the wall. That's very cool. Oh, wait, it actually didn't hit the wall. Let's try that again. Oh, there we go. It hit the wall and it didn't put me inside the wall. That's very nice. That's what we want. Now, this implementation, as you can see, isn't perfect. I just hit a box and the box pushed me uh, through the wall here. So you would have to do some adjustments. You would have to do some more checks that makes this you know, a more reliable ability, as you can see. It's a little bit wonky still. Uh, but this is a very neat prototype of the Blink ability from Overwatch, I feel. It encapsulates exactly what the ability is about. You press a button and you go forward in a very fast manner. Um, could perchance uh, think about just making it teleport you rather than move you because physics, uh, when you move this fast, are rather crazy as you can see. Uh, things really start flying, uh, which can become a problem when you're playing games, especially if you're gonna play multiplayer games and your players keep going through the, the floor or the walls because the physics are too crazy. So a few things to consider at least. But as a prototype ability, this is pretty good. This encapsulates exactly what the ability is about. It works, they're fairly stable, has a few you know kinks here and there, but it works. And that's all we really cared about in the first place. Now, what you could do uh, to further develop this ability and make it like four directional or even eight directional so you can uh, you know, blink left, right, up, down, but also upper, right, upper, left, and so forth. You would have to move this branch a little bit back and then make some logic here, which determines uh, which way these uh, vectors here should, uh, well, th this one is gonna be the same every time, but this one here where the trace ends, this is the one you wanna manipulate so that when it looks, when it casts out the trace line, then the rest of this math should still be good. Uh, but yeah, this this determines in which direction uh, the trace is going to go in. So if you if you want to manipulate this, you can, and then make it four or eight directional if you want to. We aren't going to do that in this video. Perhaps I'll do that in another video if people want it. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more complicated than this setup. So I hope this was useful to you. I hope you can use it for something. If you want, you can combine this with our with the uh, last lecture that I put out, which was about how to do the stylized health bar. Uh, link in on the screen right now. And then you can try and combine, you know, like a, a stamina meter or I don't know, like an ability counter or something like a charge counter, and then combine that with this ability so that you have limits on how much you can use this ability. So. That's all for this time. Uh, I hope you liked it. Uh, please leave comments and feedback uh, below. Also like and subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you next time.